Hello, world. Welcome, I am your host, Mr. Stag. Did you know it was possible to make millions selling vegetable oil? Today we will be discussing the salad oil scandal. The salad oil scandal, also referred to as the soybean scandal, was a major corporate scandal in 1963 that caused over $180 million in losses which would be $1.52 billion today to corporations including American Express, Bank of America and Bank Lumi, as well as many international trading companies. The scandal involved the Allied Crude Vegetable Oil Company in New Jersey, owned by Anthony Tino De Angelis, former commodities broker. Anthony Tino De Angelis was born on November 3, 1915 in Bayonne, New Jersey, a commodities trader who dealt in vegetable oil futures worldwide. De Angelis was born to Italian immigrant parents in the Bronx. While still a teenager he managed about 200 employees in a meat and fish market. When he found out that the new National School Lunch Act program would buy practically any food items given certain price requirements, he took over the Adolf Goebel Company in North Bergen, New Jersey and was awarded a large contract, whence he promptly overcharged the government by $31,000. He also delivered over 2 million pounds of uninspected meat. Goebel would eventually go bankrupt. In 1955, he formed Allied Crude Vegetable Oil Refining Corporation to participate in the U.S. government's Food for Peace program to sell subsidized surplus food ingredients to Europe to shore up their weak post-war economies. He formed Allied in a dilapidated tank farm, in Bayonne, New Jersey and, with the patronage of several major grain exporters, began shipping massive quantities of substandard shortening and other vegetable oil products to Europe. De Angelis gradually became a major player in Europe and the commodities markets, later expanding into cotton and soybeans. In 1962, De Angelis began to accumulate massive quantities of soybean oil to attempt to corner the soybean oil market. With his huge inventory as collateral, he borrowed from various Wall Street banks and companies, and used the proceeds to buy as many oil futures as possible. Soon he would be long a large quantity hoping for soon to be expensive oil and oil futures, as prices rose due to the market corner. In the early 1960s American Express was a respected name in travelers' checks and credit cards. The company created a new division to specialize in field warehousing, to finance businesses using their inventory of goods and commodities as collateral. Tino de Angelis was a new customer and Amex wrote warehouse receipts for many millions of pounds of vegetable oil with him as beneficiary. The receipts would then be presented to a bank or broker and discounted for cash. As De Angelis' stock of warehouse receipts increased, he began to replace the soybean oil in his tanks with water. Some tanks had special compartments, while others were hooked up to a maze of pipes to shuttle oil from one tank to the next to fool inspectors. When inspectors audited Allied's facilities, the company would transfer the same oil stock from tank to tank to fool the inspectors while entertaining them during lunch. What puzzled authorities about Amex's field warehousing operation was that De Angelis' soybean oil stock exceeded the stock available in the entire United States, according to the Department of Agriculture. Allied posted £1.8 billion of soybean oil as collateral to fraudulently obtain $180 million in loans, when the actual stock was a mere £110 million. While the warehouse operation was small, Amex was lenient with De Angelis, as he was one of their main customers. With Amex staking its reputation behind all the oil and with De Angelis offering great deals, mainstream companies such as Bunge Limited, Staley, and Procter & Gamble were soon participating. Bank of America joined in to provided collateralized loans. By the time the swindle collapsed, De Angelis had gotten loans from a total of 51 companies. 
Inspectors were eventually tipped off by bribery attempts and delivery mistakes. They inspected Allied's tanks again and this time they found the water. A massive soybean oil futures crash ensued and wiped out the value of the loan collateral. The purchase of soybean oil futures contracts would increase the price of soybean oil, increasing the value of Allied's soybean oil inventory and enabling it to make money off of its futures contracts. Allied crude was supposed to have $150 million in vegetable oil as collateral, but only had $6 million. Soybean oil closed at $9.875 on Friday, November 15, at $9 on Monday and $7.75 on Tuesday, November 19, wiping out the entire value of the De Angelis loans. De Angelis's company had been losing money all along, and the loans were used to cover these mounting losses. De Angelis's goal was to sell out at the top and cover all of his losses, but of course, his plan didn't work out that way. On November 19, 1963, De Angelis Company filed for bankruptcy and investors found hundreds of millions of dollars in unaccounted funds. The financial integrity of the dealers behind De Angelis Futures trades were now in question. Traders scurried to recover their funds after the NYSE, worried about a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission investigation, suspended Williston and Bean and Ira Haupt and Co's trading privileges. The entire debacle played out with assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963 as a background. Hours before Kennedy was shot, NY Stock Exchange President G. Keith Funston attempted to avert a market crash as Ira Haupt's 20,700 customers, fearing financial ruin, scrambled to sell their salad oil holdings before they became worthless. These events caused the liquidation of Ira Haupt & Co., a result of customer margin calls in the wake of the Allied scandal, as well as the forced merger of brokerage J.R. Williston & Bean with a rival firm. Because of all the trades the brokerage firm did on De Angelis' behalf, various banks were left holding the bag with over $37 million in unrecoverable loans. As the Kennedy assassination threw the market into a panic, 2.6 million shares were sold and the Dow dropped 24 points, about 5%, in 27 minutes. The exchange was forced to close 83 minutes early. U.S. Attorney for the District of New Jersey David M. Satz Jr. charged De Angelis with contempt after he found De Angelis had funneled over $500,000 from Allied into his personal account at a Swiss bank. Amex was forced to make good on their warehouse contracts and took a massive loss. The two trading firms were eventually bought by larger players. De Angelis was sentenced to a seven-year jail term. In the wake of the scandal, keen observer and investor Warren Buffett took advantage of the plunge in the price of American Express shares and bought 5% of the company for only $20 million. The Amex investment is worth more than $25 billion today. In January of 1965, Tony was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison but was released out on parole in 1972. Leaving prison, he said, coming here actually saved my life. I came in here weighing 250 and left weighing 170. Spiritually, physically, and morally this prison has saved my life. It was not long before he was back to defrauding people. By 1975 he was involved in another scam, this time a Ponzi scheme involving cattle in the Midwest. De Angelis used two slaughterhouses, Rex Pork and Mr. Pork, to swindle livestock dealers in Indianapolis out of $7 million or approximately $31 million in today's dollars worth of hogs. Two of the top livestock dealers facing losses were M&R Livestock, owned by Theodore C. McEninch, and Farrow & Co., owned by Alan S. Farrow. 
De Angelis continued trading with these livestock dealers via fraudulent letters promising payment. Tony was sent back to jail in 1980 for the Ponzi scheme. He was released again in 1983 and then sent back to jail for more fraud at the age of 77 in 1993 for 21 months. In 2009 he passed away at the age of 93. You would have never guessed it possible to make millions on vegetable oil fraud. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mr. Stag logging off.